Hey guys, if you haven't watched my first video on the bump on Ori mod, go check it out in the top right to understand what's going on. In this video, I want to show how you can handle possible problems with the bump on Ori mod. We'll start with the trivial cases. If the PCB doesn't fit in the case, whether because there are tabs or the size is just too big, you need to find a universal 60% PCB instead. I'll list some suggestions on the screen. If the PCB has an unconventional USB-C position, meaning it's not in between the first and second key on the top left, which I've only seen in the KBD Craft PCB, then you will need to get a different PCB as mentioned before. If the JST is too short for the PCB, then you have to find a longer JST cable or use another PCB with a compatible JST position. At this stage, you should be able to put the build in the case. Suppose you follow the guide and use the 8x2.5 mm bump bonds. If the o-ring doesn't sit on the bump bonds, causing the PCB to rest on the bottom case, then the case is too wide to friction fit. This is where you can usually get creative with the bump bonds, but this is easier said than done. The most reliable method I found is to use tall flat bump bonds at the non cutout spots. Generally, you want to find bump bonds that lift the PCB 4 to 6 mm above the bottom and protrudes 3 to 4 mm from the wall. I found that these three bump bonds cut in half will work the 12.7 by 3 mm, 12 by 4 mm, and the 10 by 4 mm. Here's an example with the 12.7 by 3 mm bump bonds. As you see, the PCB is now resting on the bump bonds. Here's another example, this time with the 12 by 4 mm bump bonds on the top and the 10 by 4 mm bump bonds on the bottom. Now you might be tempted to use a taller round bump on, such as these 8 by 4 mm ones, but I recommend against that as without the friction fit and something to block the build from moving up and down, the o-ring will slide off the bump on. This is because the smaller surface contact on the dome shaped bump bonds make them slippery without any supports, whereas the flat tapered bump bonds don't have this problem. A common problem is the build being too loose inside the case. Then you need to add alignment bump bonds around the case that prevents any movement, just like alignment pins. The goal is to center it on the USB-C port and the top case. As for what bump bonds to use, there aren't any rules. The only thing that matters is the height. After some testing, here's what I came up with. I have two side bump bonds and two front bump bonds. Ideally, the o-ring should contact alignment bump bonds, but not be compressed by them. You can tinker a lot with how many to put and where to put them for the best results. I'll just emphasize that less is more. Let's check that we met our goals. It's centered on a USB-C port in the top case. If the build sits too low or there's keycap interference with the fasteners, then you can simply stack some bump-ons under the mounting bump-on. Again, use any bump ons you want to get the desired height. Suppose the fasteners don't do their job of fastening. A simple fix is to move the fasteners further out. So I've already mentioned this tip in the first video, but I want to highlight it again as it's key to the longevity of this mod. You can see that this mounting bump on is eventually going to collapse. I've tried replacing it, but it keeps collapsing. If you also have a bump on that doesn't stick well, you have to stick another bump on underneath it on the bottom case. You want it as close as possible. Now it should be very secure. On a related note, if the bump on feet are sliding on a smooth acrylic, you can add a bump on in the direction that it's sliding. For example, mine were sliding up, so I applied another bump on right above it. Last but not least, I created a new innovation to the mod that solves a problem specific to this board. Now the purple board was fine, but this might happen to your acrylic board. Recently, I discovered that the o-ring at the spacebar area was resting on this ledge in between the acrylic layers. This was causing the spacebar to feel really firm because you're basically pressing on acrylic. I found that if you place an 8 by 25 millimeter bump on at the bottom of this slot and another at the other end, they will push the o-ring off the ledge so that it sits on the bump bonds instead, which is much softer. You might be able to see how the bump bonds create a space in between the ledge and the o-ring. Hence why I call them spacebar spacers. If you're wondering why they're not placed further from the spacebar, 
That's due to the o-ring protruding around the stabilizer over here and over here. So placing the spacers outside the stabilizer will make them less effective. Here's a small comparison between spacers and no spacers. Alright, this covers pretty much all the problems I faced and the techniques I utilize when bump on or remodding my 5 keyboards. I hope these tips and tricks will make your modding smoother. To wrap things up, I have a few final remarks. I haven't tried modding non 60% so I can't speak much for problems associated with other layouts. Just remember, when in doubt, bump on it out. Also, keep in mind that every PCB is a bit different. Whether it's the hot swap sockets, the o-ring cutouts, or the GST connector, you might need to tweak the mod accordingly if you plan to swap builds around. Lastly, it's nice to keep bump ons of various sizes on hand. You never know when you need replacements and want to try new configurations. Good luck with the bump on o-ring mod, and most importantly, have fun.